Hello, today I'm looking at the Zotac GTX 1080 AMP graphics card. Previously I've reviewed the GTX 1070 G1 Gaming by Gigabyte, so I'm really excited to see how much of a performance difference there is between the two. This GTX 1080 AMP edition by Zotac currently comes in at a price of around the 800 US dollar mark. Before we move on, I'd like to thank a true subscriber of mine named Dominic Krauss for lending me his expensive graphics card for this video. In the packaging, the graphics card itself, two dual 6-pin to 8-pin power cables, the driver CD, this small Zotac sticker, and last but not least, the quick installation guide. The Zotac GTX 1080 amp comes with the following specs. NVIDIA GP104 Pascal GPU, 16 nanometer process, 8 gigabytes of the new GDDR5X video memory, bus with 256 bit, the GPU base clock is at 1683 MHz, the boost at 1822 MHz, the memory at 2500 MHz, 10 GHz effectively. Interface PCI Express 3.0, 3 p 180 watts, two 8-pin PCIe power connectors are required to power the card up, video output, one dual link DVI-D, a single HDMI 2.0B, as well as three DisplayPort 1.4 outputs. DirectX 12 OpenGL 4.5 and Vulkan API support, two-way SLI support with NVIDIA's high bandwidth bridge, and last but not least, this graphics card measures under the length of 30 centimeters, making it a pretty long one. This GTX 1080 AMP features Zotac's powerful quite beefy ice storm cooler with five different heat pipes altogether. The aluminum heatsink is fairly big and on top sit two silent 100mm fans. What I like a lot here is the use of a metal shroud. Zotac even went one step further and goes for their so-called carbon exo armor with carbon detailing to improve aesthetics. On the back of the card also part of that armor is a really nice solid metal backplate that adds extra protection as well as rigidity. Spectra is what Zotac names their lighting system, offering seven different colors to choose from. Unfortunately, no RGB illumination here, like on several other cards. There are a few effects that we can go for, such as static, breathing, strobe, as well as cycle. The brightness can be changed too, and if you want to, the LEDs can be turned off. All these customization options can be accessed in the Firestorm software, which basically also is an overclocking and monitoring utility for the GPU. Another feature by Zotac called freeze turns off the fans on idle when no active cooling is needed, therefore no noise is produced under light loads. In terms of aesthetics, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really a fan of the design Zotac decided to go for, I prefer minimalism, but there's no doubt the build quality is top notch here. And in the end it all comes down to performance. And exactly that we'll check out now, have fun! So from what we've seen, a GTX 1080 clearly is no 1080p card anymore. It's way overkill for such a resolution. I think it's the perfect graphics card for 1440p screens, although I haven't shown you any of such benchmarks, but since 4K gaming 2160p is on the rise, I think this GTX 1080 AMP by Zotac does offer quite impressive performance in games. For benchmarking purposes, I ran games at unrealistic settings, therefore I'm not getting the optimal frame rate and graphics quality balance out of every game, 
but with a little tweaking and turning down several settings such as AA, great FPS results can be seen. Right now, at the time of this video, the GTX 1080 is the most powerful consumer graphics card in the market, and even though its smaller brother, the 1070 is as good as previous highest end models, there's quite the performance difference noticeable between the 1080 and 1070. An interesting question arises now, is it worth it paying that much more for a solid GTX 1080, such as this one by Zotac over a GTX 1070? Well, at roughly $800, it depends. But in the end, I'd say it can be worth it. Sure, the 1080 is meant for high resolution gaming, so please, please do not even think of getting this GPU for 1080p gaming, not even if you have a high refresh rate monitor. The GTX 1070 is good enough for that purpose. The 1080, however, is not quite powerful enough yet to drive latest game titles at maxed out settings at the 2160p resolution, but you sure can count on fascinating 1440p goodness. The Zotac GTX 1080 amp overclocks well, runs very cool, quiet, although in certain games there is some coil wine going on from time to time, and sometimes it appears the card can't decide whether or not the fans need to spin an idle. Therefore, they turn on, spin for a couple seconds, and then stop again, and then repeat. However, that can easily be taken care of in the Firestorm software. Additionally, the LED colors are not very clean, so instead of yellow, I was getting some kind of Nvidia green. But other than that, great performance is offered, and the power efficiency is pretty impressive with these new Nvidia Pascal GPUs. So the Zotac GTX 1080 amp is not a 100% perfect graphics card, but I can definitely recommend it. It's getting my silver award. Once again, huge thanks go out to Dominic Krauss for lending me this graphics card. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.